Hello, welcome back to Auto Pop Culture. Today we're going over Supernatural's season 15, which equals the last final season in Supernatural. And I am so excited. I, as a huge Supernatural fan, that pretty much got into them in season 5, went backwards to watch all the season 1 to 4, and pretty much just enjoyed every bit of it. And I know that there's pieces of it where it went kind of lopsided in some cases, like especially, I want to say season 13 or, no, I think season 13 and season 12, one of those two were kind of very um, floppy, but I felt like they got right back on course and they've always, re they always do, like if it's, I feel like in the floppy seasons where they kind of have like kind of the storylines kind of weird, they up, they still, it becomes a great season anyway because the the, um, they're not called, I don't want to call them feeler, feller episodes, but more like the haunting episodes that have nothing to do with the plot have, were like one of the best ones. We got Scooby-Doo out of one of them too, and I really, really liked it. Oh, Scooby-Doo crossover kind of thing. So I am so excited to kind of, to definitely review this final season and go into what I think about it. Um, just so you know, it's going to be a lot of spoilers. I'm pretty much going through every episode as much as I can, and I'm going to bulk some of them together, too, because I think I think a couple episodes in a row were doing a bit of the same um, plot, but I have a, re there's a reason I want to put them together, because there's a, there's a, I like the whole arcing of it. Um, so yeah, so there's going to be a lot of spoilers. If you haven't seen it, go watch it, get back to this. Um, and after that, I want to give you my full-on review of the series and this, uh, season. So, first off, as we left off in the last season, pretty much, um, the characters that we really focus on in this whole thing, mostly, Sam, Dean, Castiel, Jack, and, uh, Chuck. So, pretty much, Chuck is, we find out that he's God in season 14, and we try to stop, they try to stop him, but we, it doesn't really work out. And they get to the point where the end of the season 14, they pre he pretty much is like, it's done. And he snaps his fingers and brings back all the demons and monsters and every bit of people, like, monsters that they killed, that Sam and Dean killed before, and just brought them all back. Brought them out to hell, brought a lot of other people from hell, and just all this resurrection. So, and he snaps his fingers, he's like, this is the end. So I thought, like, oh, this is no way they're going to survive this, but of course they do. Um, and I felt like season, or episode one, two, and three was pretty much figuring that issue out. And the, they pretty much come across, um, cause they, at the end of season 14, um, Jack dies. But he is inside the, his soul, or part of him is actually in the empty where all the angels, um, go to. It's, that's kind of their purgatory or their kind of heaven, I guess. Um, but they end up going to an empty place. Um, and he goes there too, with the help of the empty and Billy, they have a whole plan for him to help out with, uh, assisting Sam and Dean, but we don't know yet. So we get into that point and he, they pretty much have his body, but the, or uh, in their, they, Sam and Dean pretty much have the body in season, in episode one and of Jack and pretty much just holding on to it and, at the same time, immediately, a demon pretty much, like, takes over the body and takes the ride, pretty much has the body for a couple of episodes. So, and also, he's also helping them deal with the monsters that have been resurrected. resurrected. So, we deal with that, we are um, pretty much just doing, they're pretty much fighting off these people, or fighting off these monsters, also trying to keep it a secret, but not also keeping it a secret, because as things go on, we start realizing that there's so much, there's so many creatures, and so many things happening, that they can't really lie to anybody about them, about there being monsters, and only choosing to select people to have that kind of knowledge, but they decide now to kind of, like, if you want to know, you'll know, kind of thing, like, if you ask, we'll tell you. Um... So yeah, so pretty much that happens. They call Rowena to help out with the spell to keep them at bay and also find a spell to send them all back to hell. And pretty much we find out that the only way, like shit's not really working out. Things are not moving as fast as they should be. And we get to the point where Rowena says there is a way to send them all to hell. 
by pretty much sacrificing my body to make the spell work. So the pre pretty much, Ro um, Rowena ends up dying in the end and gives, pretty much just says, like, Sam, you need to do the, the one, be, needs to be the one that kills me. So she does that. She dies. We get a huge, sad little, like, moment with her. Um, and then it moves on into, well, that's done. They can move on to actually just hunting, uh, hunting people, or hunting monsters. And I feel like from C from episode four to seven, discarding, taking away the, um, I want to say taken, ah, uh, yeah, I think they're all are kind of together. So I feel like season, or episode four to episode seven, we start doing hunt, hunting again, but it's not just hunting. It's, it's a weird type of hunting. It's this weird type of, they're doing normal cases, but these cases have a lot of moral muddiness to them. So, for example, the first one they deal with is, um, I hope I'm doing, uh, um, is the, this vampire that pretty much is killing a lot of people and a vet, um, and there's a death, or, Killed this, uh, killed this girl, so they try to hunt it down who it, who it is and who this person is. They find out it's this kid who pretty much killed, who accidentally killed, um, this girl because he still knew as a vampire and he got bit by a vampire not so long ago and the parents are trying to hide that from them because they know that there's hunters, there's, um, hunters out there that try, that kill monsters and so they're trying to hide it from, um, uh, Sam and Dean but they pretty much find out. And the end of it, the teen decides to take responsibility and is just like, I did it. I need to be responsible for this. Just kill me. And so they end up doing, they end up do, they end up killing him. But it's interesting because it's something that usually doesn't happen. It, the other cases are usually black and white. And it goes into the other, like, so they are either monsters and you need to kill them. And they're very vicious. There's no undertone thing of they're doing this for, because they can't control themselves or anything. Like, it's a complete, like, fuck the world, I'm killing, I'm eating, it's what I do, I have what I like, you know? And I think they only did it one time in a case where she, this guy doesn't know he's a monster, and he finds out he is, but he can't really stop, and so he ends up doing, they end up killing him, um, in a werewolf who can't stop killing, and she finds out she's a werewolf, bitten by her ex, and stuff like that, and so she has to be killed, but those are the only two times where the, where the moral muddiness happens, and this one goes a lot. And we're not even talking about just, like, we go into the next one where it talks about werewolf brothers who, one, wants to keep going with killing off people and just going, becoming a complete werewolf and everything and not really looking at who they kill, while the brother is also a werewolf, but he's like, I don't really want to do this. I don't like killing people. And so he ends up killing his own brother to stop the cycle. And then it goes into the next one, uh, episode six, where they have this weird thing where the, um, well, in this case, we're starting to, we start to mingle into the actual plot where we start getting, where Elaine, who's the death, who's the death, uh, hunter, we meet two seasons ago, I want to say, um, she comes back, oh, I don't know, maybe even further back, um, she comes back as a ghost to help them out, and they figure, because, um, to figure to help out Sam figure out how to get all these spells that Rowena has gave to has uh, pretty much inherited over to Sam all her powers or all her spells books her pretty much keep is located somewhere so they try to find it they find it these other witches are also trying to get to it now that they know that Rowena's dead but of course since Sam is a rightful owner of it and she made it so she caused a spell so only he can do it he can touch things. And in that case, with the thanks to thank El Elaine, or El or Eileen is what her actual name is, my god, Eileen, they bring her back as a physical person. And so she's like, cool, I'm gonna go off, do my own thing, we don't, we don't, I don't want to be a part of your god-killing thing. Um, and then it goes into another one where she, where he, where Dean finds a hunter friend, visit him, they sing together, which is kind of cool to hear Dean sing for the first time that actually is singing, and he sounds really, 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 really good. Like, amazingly good. And his friend sounds great, great too. And he's also, I know that he's also a singer. I know that Dean is, is also part of a band now. Um, so yeah, so he finds out about that Dean's par uh, friend is actually killing off, or kill, 
allowing this, pretty much captured this monster that kills off people and with the return gives him the riches and all the gifts and everything he wants to enjoy life. And so Dean's like, that's not how this works. You can't do that. So of course, he becomes the monster in that episode. And then we never have really touched on that kind of direction where we talked about a human being, including a hunter, which is without being turned into a vampire. So we're not talking about the other guy that got turned into a vampire. Um, Gor Gordon? Gordon. Yeah, that's a different story. Once he turns into a vampire, I feel like it knocks out the whole, you're a human, you know? So he pretty much, he ends up killing the guy and killing the monster that he's that the guy chained up. And at this time, too, I have little notes to make sure I say, don't say off track because I definitely go off track all the time. Um, they also have a way to, they want to track down, at the meantime, Castiel and uh, Jack and Sam are, are trying to track, or Castiel and Dean, or Dean, Castiel and, and Sam are trying to tr track down this guy, or God, pretty much, and, but I feel like in those cases, those episodes, you get to see more, you get to see that their hunting is a little bit in the gray areas in a lot of places, and that, that we don't see as often. Then finally we get back into the actual main plot, and this whole plot is pretty much, excuse me, is trying to find a way to stop Chuck. Chuck is coming back, and he pretty much is trying to, trying, they're trying to find a way to to defeat him, and so they go to hell to find it, to figure out, um, to find Michael thinking that he was still in the cage. Um, they go to find out that Rowena is still alive. She actually is the queen of hell, and I thought, like, this is a perfect ending for her. She needs to take on, the, like, the mantle that Castiel had, or Castiel, that, uh, Crowley had before, and now he, now she is that. It's like the family business kind of thing. I love it. And she fucking looks so comfortable, so right for the role. And so she's like, there's no, Michael's not here. He escaped after the, everything opened and God released all these people. So, of course, he also escaped. Um, so yeah, so she pretty much, um, says that, and so they tried to find, they think, okay, cool, so we need to find, um, Michael somehow, but of course, Chuck comes in and traps, uh, um, Eileen and, uh, Sam, and because the whole issue is that in the end of season 14, Sam shoots him with the, um, oh, I wrote this down, um, the equalized equalizer gun, which is supposed to kill God, but instead doesn't really do it. Just it just injures him and lacks his power, and it's just, I think his power is kind of fading, so he can't heal without that bullet getting out. But he can't pull it out because if it pulls, because he's connected to Dean or to Sam, because there's a the spell pretty much of him shooting God pretty much injures him as well. So he captures him in the in the idea of breaking down Sam, because the idea is that the fact that Sam has hope is a reason why God can, or why Chuck cannot heal. So finally, he gets to the point where he does break him down, and he uses a lane, and then he, he used a lane to do that, or Eileen to do that, with the idea that he knew that they would resurrect Eileen. He, like, this whole episode, or whole season, like, God, or... Chuck is so ahead of, is very ahead of a lot of things and a lot of places. And we do reveal that later on, just like, oh, wow, you knew this. Oh, I knew, he's like, oh, yeah, I knew that. Oh, I knew you would do that. I actually manipulate you guys to do that. And you thought it was your own will. Like, I'm still making this story. And he's, because he's a writer. He's, a, he wants to, he wants danger and plot and all this stuff like that without actually take without any consequence to what he's doing to these people, um, including Sam and Dean. Um, so yeah, so pretty much they had, has, have Dean go rescue them, and, uh, go rescue Sam and Eileen, or Eileen, and they're pretty much just faced with the idea that they need to find a way to get ahead of Chuck, because he seems to be, like, always ahead of, ahead of them, and then we go into, um, we go, um, but because of all of that happening, he gets his power, uh, Chuck gets his power back because of, with removing the bullet and lowering um, Sam's hope. So now he's like, you know what? I've always, I've been the plot of the story and telling you everything. So I'm going to do a thing where I 
and it's just gonna snap. You're not the heroes of the story anymore. You're just regular people. And because being the heroes of their story, they have this automatic luck where they can come back to life. They didn't have to worry about a lot of things going on. But now they're back on doing a case with Garth, and they realize that they don't have power. They don't have that kind of like resilience. They are getting like toothaches, and Dean has to get his like get a dentist checkup with Garth, who is actually really good with has dental like skills, I guess. And pretty much had to, she, he's like, I don't know what to do. He's and like, Garth is like, okay, there's a place that you can go to where you can pretty much gamble your luck and you can get your luck back. So they go and they find this, um, goddess fortune. And she pretty much is just like, I, you need to play the game to play this game that I, that everybody else is playing to get your luck. And, but this whole game is like very, like, it's kind of a scam in a way because everybody can get luck, but they can lose it just as quickly. And so all these people were like kind of gamblers and addicted to the whole getting luck. So they, Sam and Dean releases all of them in some way. And with that, Fortune's like, okay, you know, I want to give you your luck just because. Because I think that there's a bigger thing that's going on than what I'm doing. And I think that you deserve it. So she gives them their back their luck. And then now they have the luck to face, like, to, to face Chuck. Basically. Um, then we move on to more of the other kind of cleaning up pieces. So we have Kaya from the Bad Place who comes back. And she has um, Jody hostage because she's like, I want to go back to the Bad Place. I know it's destroying because at the same time, um, Chuck is destroying all these dimension worlds that have multiple Deans and multiple Sam and Deans and how it ends and everything. And so those are technically his stories that he had. And when he's done with them, he destroys the world, moves on to build another world and makes and watches them and does his old thing, like his old narration until he's bored, pretty much just tired and bored over it. So he's pretty much looking to destroy worlds and he's destroying the bad place as it is. And Kaya, and there's like, you know, Kaya, if you go back to the, place you're going to die she's like i don't care this is just this is not my place to be in this world so they go back they put her there they also get kaya the real kaya that's part supposed to be part of the real world and bring her back so everything's back in order in that way um we come to find out that um chuck is a or that um the demon gets out of uh jack and Billy is actually informs them. She's like, I have actually been working with Chuck to or to Jack to get his get him powered up to kill uh, Chuck. Um, so of course they have to go to this place to get this um, kind of orb, and which is what's it, what's it supposed to do is to bring back Jack uh, Jack's soul, and that's part of making him whoever whatever he's supposed to be. So they do that, they find that out, and he gets his soul back, and he feels, uh, Chuck starts to feel, or Jack starts to feel guilty about the fact that he killed their mom in the past season. It was, it was a complete accident, but of course he feels guilty of it because he has his soul back finally. And then we go into the, and then we have like a nice little break for a minute, and which is Hall, last holiday, which is my, one of my favorite episodes, and we meet this, um, because there's issues inside the bunker, with electricity and plumbing, so they try to do a restart. They find this restart button, they press it, but it brings back this wood nymph who is pretty much a caretaker for the whole um, bunker, and so she's super nice, and her name is Mrs. Butters, and she pretty much is cleaning, she's like cleans up and everything, she gets everything organized, she keeps the schedulings going with the kills and the um cases and the monster cases so of course they go on for like good couple of days where they really are like just killing monsters celebrating with the uh, with mrs butters because she wants to celebrate each holiday and so they get christmas halloween birthdays and all that stuff like that so you finally get to see chuck or jack and sam and dean kind of in this weird world where they actually are being family for a minute and i think that also bonds more to them, kind of adds more bond to them. Um, of course, it gets kind of crazy because the nymph realizes that um, that Jack is actually, is son, is the son of Lucifer. She mistakes that as like, he's a monster. Tries to kill him. Doesn't work out. They explain to her what's going on. She's like, honestly, I just want to go back into the woods because I've never been there. She's like, go back. They're like, go back. We don't need you. We have this covered kind of thing. So they do. 
and and we kind of move on to Jack and Jack and Castiel having like pieces of where they have they're solving cases, and meanwhile of uh, Dean and, and sometimes Castiel, but Dean Dean and Sam are also trying are more trying to find out a ways to power up. Um, Jack, so he can face God, but then we find out later on that the whole thing of powering up wasn't really, was technically is powering up, but Billy explains to them that it's going to actually be a bomb, that he's a bomb that takes away, that turns into a full-on black hole that pulls in all, like, uh, what's the word? Pretty much very high-powered people, like, entities, pretty much they want to take with Chuck and Amara, but they have to get Amara to agree with being there to hold Chuck down. And of course, Amara has her own little thoughts, and she's like, I just want to enjoy the world. I don't really think that I really want to go double cross my brother. But then she goes to check on him and, fig and finds out like, okay, I want to show you why you should keep Earth and why you shouldn't destroy everything and why you shouldn't destroy all of, all of these worlds because you're bored and because you're mad at Sam and Neen. And here's all the good things about the world. And he's, she's like, he's like, yeah, 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 I see that, but eh, I don't really care. Um, in the meanwhile, they're trying to, uh, while Jack is absorbing and everything, all his stuff, Chuck decide, um, Chuck decides to absorb Amara with the thought, with Amara's thought that she was being betrayed by Dean because she's pretty much saying in our thoughts and her plan was to convince Chuck that there's this world is so great to keep we shouldn't do that but if he did disagree that she would bring him back to the bunker and trap him and hold him down until um cast if we told uh Jack get his final ritual that'll make him completely the bomb so they get they hold him down uh, she holds him down but then he convinces her that you know, this is not that he betrayed you. He betrayed you all to do this because they wanted to kill you. And so she's like, okay, absorb me so you can have more power. So she, he does. And his thought was like, oh, if I absorb myself to where they had to kill me and have this bomb go off with, Ch with Jack, I'm going to conflict them by having Sam kind of have this thing where he doesn't believe that it will work and having Dean believe that it does work. So then they fight each other, they kill each other. And that's my actual ending. I want to have them kill each other. That's my ending. Doesn't work out. He gets pissed and he disappears, leaving Chuck or leaving Jack to pretty much almost on his were were like like verge of exploding. But of course, they get help with um, Billy, who snaps him into the empty, and that didn't sit well with the empty because she's like, "Oh, you're making everything loud," because she likes quiet. She just wants nothing to do with anything. She just wants to be alone. And them keep on bringing people in and out of the empty really bugs her. So that happens. He explodes, but he survives. She survives too because she's empty. She can't really die. And that really pisses off, pisses her off. So now she's pissed off at Billy too for doing that. And Billy, all, we also find out Billy is pretty much um, is somebody that's looking to do is to re kill off everybody that came back, including or put, pretty much put everybody back to where they were. When they died, they died. There's no bringing back, and so since everybody was brought back, including the Outer World people, she wants to put them all back. So she, so with that in mind, they find out that she wants to do that, and with the idea that she wants to be pretty much God after that. She wants to take over, and they don't like that. So they pretty much attack her and try to get her to, um, to, def to pretty much kill her off, and she does get nicked, and she is dying from that nick, but it, that's not what's really killing her. So th they are still getting attacked by her. And also, on top of that, people are starting to just, like, Thanos disappear, like, vanish. And it's all these people that were either in the outer world or were, that died before and that got brought back. So they are, so they, so Sam and, think, Sam and Dean think, oh, this is it. This is them, do, this is... Billy doing this, I want everything back in order. Everybody that died will go back to dying and everything. So they think it's her. They try to trap her and everything. And she's like, just so you know, this is not me. This is not, has nothing to do with me. I'm not doing this. But now that you're here, I'm going to kill you because I'm pissed. So, of course, they are getting hunted down by her in the bunker. 
And Cass comes to the idea, she's like, there's no way we're going to get out of this. Instead, and the only person that can really defeat her is the Empty. And I made a promise to the Empty to bring back Jack if I would, um, if I would go back to her afterwards. Like, in the end of it, the minute that I feel happiness, she wants to claim my soul and pull me back into the Empty. I can do that and have Billy go back with me. So, of course, he does that, and he confesses his love to to Dean, which is I one of those points where I don't really believe that it was a it was a romantic, intimate, a uh, romantic love towards it. I think he just realizes he just has a. I felt like it was a final piece of his humanity that he finally can feel that he didn't feel before. That he never could really pronounce or understand before, but now he actually understands the what pretty much. Dean has opened his heart so much about humans, about how he feels, and tur and really turned so many things, so many of his morals, how he used to see things into a different way. And so I think he appreciates him in that way, and he does actually love him in that way. And I, but I know people are like, oh, it's a gay thing, that like, he loves him in the way, in like a homosexual way. And I was like, I don't really think so, because they didn't really lead it. They didn't really, they, the baiting, even, even the baiting was more just funny sake more than it was like actually like over hinting at something like I didn't feel like that happened but I do like it was very sad to see him go he goes he takes away he takes um Billy with him and now they're on their own with just Chuck or with just um well Chuck is there with um Dean Sam and Jack are the only ones left over to deal to deal with Chuck so pretty much they go and figure out how to to do the final, final, um, uh, oh, sorry, they go, they know that, that the last thing they need to do now is just to figure out how Chuck dies, with the idea that they have a death book, because death has finally died, Billy has died, and that moves on to another, whoever, other, uh, uh, why can't I remember the word? Um, Reaper, whatever Reaper, whatever other Reaper dies becomes death. So, of course, they're thinking about that, trying to figure out how to open the book. They can't open the book, but all who appears is fucking Lucifer out of nowhere. Nowhere. He's like, oh, hey, the Empty brought me back to, like, help you guys and open the book. Here, I brought it even a Reaper. Dead. Now he's, now she's dead. Now she's the death. And she can read it. So she does read it, and she's like, oh, I know the truth. But, of course, right before, right before she explains it to them, he kills her completely, and then just pretty much just like, oh, thank you, the book's still open, I'm taking this to God, because he told me that I, he, he's the one that actually bought me back, and guess what, Michael, you're not the best one either, you're not this, you're not the favorite anymore. Side note, Michael, they find Michael again, because they figure, they find his presence, and he's pretty much been laying low this whole time, and, but he finally decides to help them, help them. Now, this is part where it gets kind of tricky, so I'm trying, I'll try my best to explain. So, pretty much, they have Michael to help them with reading the book. They find out what the book says. Excuse me. Sorry, you know, I don't think, they actually, do they find out? I don't know if they find out. Um, but I know for sure that they have a plan, because they realize that uh, Lucifer had poked a bit of an insecurity part, and uh, Michael about oh God or God made me his favorite like son now because I'm helping him. He doesn't really care about you. And of course, Michael's like oh shit. So he communicates with with Chuck and is like oh please please let me be a part of your son your favorite son again. I'll bring them to you. And of course, Timothy knew this was going to happen that he would switch over loyalty loyalties. So they already figured out some things. But at the same time, because Jack has exploded, the spell has done something else where it doesn't, because the power has gone out, my, God, my guess is that now he needs power to pull it back in. I think it's recycling itself. And so throughout the whole time, you start seeing like dead plants and all these things kind of happening as Jack walks past things and all these stuff like that. And I thought like, oh no, he's like becoming like an evil person, anything. But no, he's absorbing a lot of energy around him, and so whatever galactic energy happens around him, too, is also being absorbed. So, of course, they meet up, which they try to have a spell that supposed to 
shoot up a beam at or reveal a a entity or a creature that would kill God. And of course, doesn't really work. Chuck finds out about this and has like figured it out. And he's like, "Thank you, Michael, for doing that." Blah blah blah. blah. But he kills off Michael because Mike, because technically Michael was helping Samini in the beginning. So he goes off him and then beats the shit out of Sam and Dean, and they're just like, he's like, stay down, he's, and they keep on getting up, but then they find out later on that because he's using all his force and his power to hit and uh, beat the shit out of them, that power is being absorbed to Chuck, or to, to Jack, because he's just, he's just chilling there. And so it's getting absorbed, absorbed, and absorbed, and absorbed, and absorbed, and he gets strong enough to where he can stand against Chuck and pretty much absorbs the rest of his power, leaving Chuck a mortal and just powerless. So in the whole aspect of the whole series, they always have a very revenge direction where they want to do stuff to avenge something, and avenge their dad, avenge Sam, avenge Dean. They're always avenging things. In this part, they realize that they don't have to do that. That there's a better way of doing this because. Dean, his Sam, his Cassiel tells him before, tells Dean before he dies that you, you see yourself as this monster, this uncontrollable force, but it's not it. You are the things that you've always done. You've always done things out of love. And I think that's a, you're the most caring, selfless person that you don't, you don't understand that you should love, you should, you should love that and you should appreciate that from yourself. So Dean does, does finally to start to love himself and he's like, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna kill you. We're gonna leave you. As a moral, as a mortal, to die old, and to get sick, and all that stuff like that, and uh, more importantly, you're forgotten. No one think, no one's gonna think of you. No one's gonna know about you. Jack is now the new god, and you're nothing. You know. So of course he didn't like that, and they leave him to dust. They leave him to like sit there and cry and everything on his knees, and Jack brings back everybody back, puts everything back to order, and he's like, now I have to go and be god, and actually have myself and not be under he uh, sorry he doesn't want to be part of everything he's not going to be involved in everything directly he's going to be very indirectly with everything he's going to he's like i'm going to i'm going to be in every raindrop and every like part of this world i want to be that that's how it's supposed to be and that's what i'm going to do since the other god see it's chuck didn't do that does that and he Pretty much is now Sam and Dean are in their own story. And so, so yeah, so they figure out that they're in their own story and they go off into the last episode, which is Carry On. And it was so brutal. It was pretty much just them having a normal hunting and they have their, have their own story and everything. And of course, the thing that happens is that. Dean gets impaled by this metal spike during having a a vampire like case, and he dies naturally. He just he just dies in that point. There's no bringing back or anything, and he goes up to heaven and finds out that Jack and Castiel, yay Castiel coming back, because Jack brought him back, I guess, and.